Hey everybody, welcome back to Premium Picks. Today we are going to break down UFC Fight Night Neil Magny versus Carlos Prates. Uh, let's get right into this card. First fight of the night, we got minus 250 Melissa Mullins versus plus 200 Claudia Saigula. Um, I think this is a very low-level fight. Neither of them are very good. Uh, I think Melissa Mullins will win just on being stronger, to be honest. like I think if she's not getting the better of the striking, if it's fairly close on the feet, she'll be the stronger girl and will be able to land on top if she needs to score a takedown or two here. So I think she's just going to out-muscle her. I don't think it's a great fight. And uh, yeah, give me Melissa Mullins. Um, that's what I got. What do you think? That's women's MMA. Melissa Mullins actually, she's the stinks in the striking department. Wrestling's not that great either. She's just a grinder, man. So I don't see anything that she does well. And uh, Saigula obviously is what? Some un unbeknownst girl that hasn't done anything in the UFC either, to be quite honest with you. But honestly, I, I can't get behind Mullen. She's sort of grinding cornhole cornoli the last time and then just absolutely gets fucking flatlined right so and then her first fight against uh irena wasn't even like great either she just grinded she slightly grinded her better than irena got grinded by herself they both it was a boring ass fight too right so and now uh, you don't really know there's a lot of unknowns with the claudia girl i'm not saying that go crazy on her but like i don't know man I, I can't get behind no Melissa Mullins at minus 250. Let's just put it that way. I will so, do plus. I'd, I'd rather throw a $10 on the other girl and just hope for the best. It's a lottery. It's almost better than lottery. But <laughs> I just, I seen, I've only seen Saigo clips, but it seems like she gets taken down pretty easy. So I, I just yeah, assume. But I also see that she's like, she gets up and she does, she does go for it. I, Melissa Mullins doesn't go for it. So. <laughs> Nah, it's, a fight. it's a shitty <laughs> fight, but yeah, I'm just going to go with the underdog for this one. Next fight of the night, minus 200, Trishan Gore versus plus 170, Antonio Tricoli. Um, I think you're looking at kind of two scenarios. I, I think Trishan Gore is uh, the faster, more explosive athlete. He could knock out Tricoli, but he's very low volume. So if he doesn't score that knockout... He could get decisioned here. I mean, he, he's the much shorter fighter. Tricoli's going to look to strike at range and try to kind of use his jabs, kicks, um, just kind of point fight him, I, I think. And I think it's possible. So I definitely see a path for both. Uh, I think it seems like everybody that I'm listening to is on the Tricoli side. Um, I think I am going to actually take the favorite and take Trison Gore here, but... Like I said, there is absolutely is a path that Tricoli just outvolumes him, outworks him, outpoints him. But I'm going to say Gore maybe is losing, but he's I think he's a, the more explosive guy. And at some point, he'll find the chin maybe. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm going I'm to take Gore. I don't love the odds. It's not going to be a bet that I play. It will be a pass from a betting point. What do you think? Yeah, it's a pass for sure. But uh, I don't know, man. Gore's got the power. Gore's younger. Gore's faster. I don't know, Tricoli, if you showed a little bit more urgency to get fights down to the ground, I would uh I'd like him a little bit more in the spot. But what 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 could you really like about him? Fighting against Maga, uh Sharp, the pirate there. He has sixteen strikes in three uh, three, three sixteen strikes in three rounds, and you fucking gas? That's interesting shit, right? So I, I get that's tough to get behind too. Chris Trayshawn Gore though, like loses this first two to Co one to Cody Bumbridge, and then the other to like uh, Brian Battle, which is a good loss. And then, but he did came out and wrestled against Josh Fremd. So, but did he turn a corner? Who knows? Again, a lot of unknowns in this, but I agree with you. I think Trayshawn Gore is not getting enough love here, and everyone's going for this Tricoli guy when, and all the film I seen, like I don't, I don't see anything he really does well. What does he do well? I don't know. He he's just a... big. He's just big. <laughs> yeah, but he throws no punches, takes nobody down. Like, what the... that's MMA. Like, I don't fucking get into the T, right? So, anyway. Yeah, I'm going to stick with, uh, I think, Trishan Gore. All right. Next fight of the night, we got plus 240 Cody Stamen, which is tempting me, versus minus 300 Damon Blackshear. Uh, Blackshear, obviously, grappler. Uh, Cody Stamen is going to want to kind of wrestle box. Um Again, I don't know. I don't know why the whole world's on Blackshear. The guy's coming off a knockout loss. I don't think he's great. I mean, I don't think Cody Stamen's great either, but 
for me, it's dog or pass. I'll tell you that. I'm not. I'm not betting Blackshear at minus three hundred. That maybe that's just me. Maybe you're. You think maybe you're way more confident in him than I am. Like I, I don't think Cody Stamen is some bum ass wrestler that's going to get taken down and tapped out very quickly. So I think there's a world where he can sprawl and brawl. Um, it, it's dog or pass for me. Dog or pass. It's probably a pass, but if I was betting, I would certainly be on the dog here. What do you think? Well, Cody Stamen is the be- I've. Cody Stamen's the better boxer. Uh, I f- he's the more technical boxer. He probably throws the better volume. And um, his wrestling in reverse isn't too bad. Like, who are the guys that have really taken down Cody Stamen and done anything with it? Uh, the couple guys come to mind, Marab Devash, really, right? Uh, Jimmy Rivera took him down twice. Uh, Aljamain Sterling took him down twice. Other than that, you're not looking at anyone that's taken him down more than once in a fight. And in those fights that he got taken down, he's thrown a hell of a lot more volume back at that guy than Luan Lerserta comes to mind. Uh, that was a couple fights ago. He took him down, but then guess what? Cody just comes back and like busts him up for 103 significant strikes. I think that's something that can happen here because Damon Blackshear, for all the takedowns that he supposedly gets, he got four against Mario Batista. In a fight that a lot of people think he won, right? But most of his strikes were on the ground. Who knows? I, I just don't think he can ride out Cody Stamen for three rounds. I I find it hard to believe that he gets three takedowns and Cody stays down for three rounds. This isn't one of those Saeed guys that are going to just do it to him. So, I don't know. And and when he can't get the takedown, his volume is very low. Demond Blackshear, like you're talking in the 50s or 60s. So Cody Stamen could beat that. So yeah, dogger pass for me too. All right. Next fight of the night, plus 140, Matt Semmelsberger against minus 170, Charles Radke. Uh, this is probably a fun fight. Um, two guys that are tough, they're going to probably throw down. I mean, Charles Radke is basically the welterweight version of Jeremy Little Heath and Stevens. I mean, he, he's he's a savage. He punches hard as hell. He's kind of a douchebag, comes across like an asshole. His post-fight interviews are ridiculous. Um, I mean, it's almost a guy that you root against just because he seems kind of like a kind of like a tool. But uh, that being said, I do think he wins this fight. I think that he uh, has a good enough wrestling base to keep the standing, and I think he's going to hit harder. And uh, I just think he's probably a little bit more technical as well. Matt Semmelsberger is just a tough, wild guy, uh, and I don't think that's going to be really enough to win here. Um, I mean, there's a world where Radke gasses out because he does slow down, and Semmelsberger takes over. But I'm going to say Charles uh, is a step ahead, I guess. Just slightly better striker. Um, and he, he and he's good enough to keep it standing, I believe. Uh, what do you think? The only person Matthew Semmelsberger has ever wrestled that had any success was Jake Matthews, which is quite off, awful for Jake Matthews, not for him. Because every other friggin' person that's fucking went up against Matthew Semmelsberger took him down multiple times or knocked him out or knocked him down at least. Maybe not knocked him out. He is a tough guy, but he gets knocked down pretty much in every fight. So you got a wild man on the other side, Charlie Radke, man. No one's ever taken him down in his three fights. And he sh- he's won against adversity. His last fight was up against Carlos Pretas. Right? The guy that's going to headline this card. Let's put it this way. If Radke beat Pretas, he would probably be headlining this card. They just want to see friggin' which of the prospects was better. I knew Pretas was better because he just looks better. He has a better style. But it does, Radke, it's no shame in him losing to someone I think has that has title aspirations. We'll talk about that later. But like, so it was, it was no shame. And then in his first two fights, I believe it was, one was Gilbert Urbina. And then uh, who was the other one? Uh, Blood Diamond. So everyone didn't like how he, re- how he wrestled and controlled Blood Diamond and didn't really do much. But at least it shows IQ. At least it shows that the guy knows how to win a fucking fight. You know what I mean? His next fight against Urbina, he, he, come up, he came up against a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of, uh, you know... He was the underdog there, and he fucking killed him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He came up against a little bit of, like, some... Uh, I would call that a little bit of adversity, sorry. And then he came out on top. And the Praetis one, I do not fault him for the Praetis one. So, yeah, man, give me Radke. I, I, I think Semmelsberg is a little overrated. Uh, he has ground games trash. I think if Radke wanted, he could be able to take him down. And I think he's the better striker. 
And, and honestly, I don't even think the uh, odds are that bad. I think there is oh, some value yeah, there no. too. I'm I'm all on that one for you. I get I get that for sure, man. All right, next fight of the night, we got a lit, last uh, late minute replacement, which kind of sucks because I was looking forward to this fight. But we got minus five hundred, Elizu Zaleski dos Santos taking on last minute replacement Zach Zachary Scroggin plus three eighty. Uh, Elizu is a great fighter. He's just a tough guy. It seems like he's usually on the wrong end of decisions, but he is competitive with anybody on the on the feet. He he can stand and strike with anyone. He's a tough guy, good striker, usually decent volume. Um, and, and he can grapple when he needs to. He's a technical enough grappler as well. So I just think he's the better fighter here, uh, quite clearly. But at minus five hundred, I don't. I don't think I can play him. But he's definitely the pick. What do you think? I think he's definitely the pick. He does a lot well. Uh, Scroggins guy is pretty much his first fight in the UFC, I believe, and he's getting thrown in with this guy. So I, Zachary Scroggins, I don't know much about him because I just. I literally didn't get to look him up. Is he Justin Strog Krogan's like brother or something like that? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, assuming that name, that Scroggins name isn't like some name that it's not Smith or fucking you know. But anyway, I mean Lizot Santos is a one up against the best of the best, right? And he's uh he's come out on top more than once. And uh I can't see, and this is just speculation, guys. I can't see like some guy coming in on his first fight and beating a vet like Dos Santos. That's 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 it. I just he's not that guy that just loses. He 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 fucking beat the shit out of uh, Ben Wilson Denis, right? Like yeah, Renat Fakradino. I thought he won yeah, that yeah, fight. Yeah, <laughs> fuck, man. No, no, I don't see some guy coming in. If this was like some middling guy, then yeah, maybe. But Dos Santos is a lot. I would say above average at best. Yeah. yeah. Next fight of the night. This should be a fun one. A uh, tough one to predict. We got plus 175, Gaston Bolanos, who is the kickboxer, the striker. And we got minus 210, Cortovius Romius, uh, <laughs> who was KO'd recently. So it's it's funny that he's a, a two-to-one favorite here against a striker. Uh, it's a pass. I will not be betting this fight. I know you guys always want picks. You hate when we owe. Well, who are you picking? Who are you picking? It is a pass. Um I, I actually think it's longer past, to be honest. I, I, someone coming off a knockout loss against a striker, yes, Bolanos might not be the most well-rounded guy. He's he's fairly one-dimensional in that he wants to always strike. But, yeah, I don't know. He can score a knockout. Why not? I, like I said, it's a pass. It, it's a, it's From a betting perspective, it's a pass. But I'll, uh, I'll lean Bolanos, to be honest. What do you think? Screw the Bolanos guy. I, I keep looking at his highlights. All he does is try to do a spinning back elbow. And it's true. You know, he likes like, Oh my God. Like, stop, buddy. It works once and then everybody falls in love with it. Like, every fight, every highlight, everything I watch of this guy, he tries to mix in the spinning back elbow. So if I was Cotavius, I'd be like, listen, he's going to try to do that spinning back elbow thing. Take you him drop down. down and you take him down because this guy has power takedowns, right? This guy has power. So he, what he really needs to do is use those power takedowns and slams that he has, because I've seen a couple, um, a couple uh, pieces of work of his where he like takes him down, and just like all of this, like body stretches him into that rear naked choke, just like, just like, and Belano so will just like tap in two seconds. So I, I, I'm gonna go with Cortavius. I think he has the better ground game. I've seen some power takedowns from him in a lot of his films. So. I say power takedowns, don't strike with him. He might get dumb and strike with him too, right? Like, who knows? Like you said, this is a red flag fight, first fight. These guys, Bolanos, he had a couple fights, so I wouldn't even count him. But, like, this guy's first fight, he might not have the IQ. You might try to just go knock this guy's head off because he does that too. Don't get me wrong. He gets into fights and he just not tries to knock guys' heads off like a muscular guy like him would just, you know what I mean? But the smart move is to wait for Gaston to do his dumb shit because he always pulls it off and just take him down and just they eat the shit out of him because he has by far the grappling edge here. So I'm going to go with Cartavius. Next fight of the night, we got veteran Carolina Kowalkiewicz coming in at plus 380 versus minus 500 Denise Gomez. Um, obviously, Carolina is <laughs> pretty old. Uh, she probably is the more technical striker, quite possibly. But the problem is, is she's going to have to be perfect for 15 minutes. She's going to have to keep her on the outside, and she's going to have to point fight perfectly for 15 minutes. I think the odds are really, really wide here. They shouldn't be this wide. 
But Denise is the younger, more explosive, stronger fighter. She has all of the finishing equity, uh, all of that kind of upside. So, I mean, yeah, there's a world where Carolina is perfect for, for 15 minutes and outpoints her to a decision. But I, I don't know. I, I got to take the younger, stronger athlete here. I, I think Denise is going to be too much, too strong. Uh, she might lose the first round, might get picked apart for the first round, but at some point, if she's not getting the better of her, she should at least be able to take her down and, and, and ground and pound her or something. Like, she's just too strong. I'm going to take the younger, stronger athlete here. I'm going to take Denise Gomez, uh, but minus 500. I won't be betting it. What do you think? Well, I, I, I'd think about taking Denise Gomez by finish, right? Um, like that would be on my, my, my things of possible. I just, okay, so Carolina. She probably is the better striker, but still, man, she gets hit a lot in her fights too, right? So, like, against Lucindo, she got hit 83 times. Against Belbita, she got hit 99 times. Against Demopolis, these are fights she's winning, getting hit 70 times, getting hit 77 times. Like, and these are, this is not great competition, you know what I'm saying? So her problem is getting she gets taken down, right? And how do you beat Denise Gomez? Is you gotta you gotta be the better wrestler, you gotta be the better tie clincher, you gotta be you gotta take her down. Carolina's not going to take her down. Like, I can't see it in a world where Carolina takes her down. So, in that case, Denise, you know, she feels comfortable on the feet and she'll go for it, right? She doesn't have no problem eating one of Carolina's little pitter patter punches to come in with one of her mammoth ones, like she hit Yaraguay with a few fights ago, right? So, and you're telling me Carolina, like, almost 40 years old, if not 40, is going to be able to take that punch. I just, I can't see it. I, I just, I don't see it. And when, Denise is able to execute her ground game and have that as like wrestling in her back pocket, which I feel like she has here. Like, you'll get a fight like a Bruna Brazil fight where, you know, she took her down three times. I can definitely see that here. You said Carolina has to be perfect for 15 minutes. She does. She can't knock out anybody. She can't even finish a sandwich. So I, I don't know. The way things are judged now, you're going to be judged on. Definitely, Denise has the power. As she, she, whenever she hits a shot, she can take three jabs to the face. But if she comes with an overhand right, she wins that exchange. Simple as that. I'm gonna take her by finish if I ever play this fight. I don't see any props yet, but we'll uh, we'll see when that comes out. <clears throat> All right, next fight of the night, we got minus four hundred Mansar Abdul Malik versus plus three hundred Dusko Todorovic. Um, unfortunately for Dusko Tavor Todorovic or uh, Todorovic, whatever, the guy looks and takes a punch just like Stefan Struve, but he doesn't have Stefan Struve's friggin' uh, <laughs> offensive ability. So I, I think he's getting creamed here. I think he's getting finished. I There's not too many fighters I wouldn't pick to knock out Dusko. So give me Mansoor by finish. I'm going to wait for that prop to come out because minus 400 is not exactly, uh, not exactly calling my name. I don't like betting minus 400s. But when the props come out, I will definitely be looking at inside the distance, maybe under even one and a half or something like that. But I think he finishes Dusko fairly easily. I think it's pretty safe. What do you think? Same. <laughs> so, like, I'm always about these new fighters coming in. I'm like, oh, can you trust him? Can you trust him? Whatever. I don't think it, it matters too much here because du what's Dusko's kryptonite is getting hit hard by a power puncher. This guy Malik Abdul, if you watch any of his fucking film, is one hell of a power puncher. One hell of a actually he has pretty good takedowns and he's strong as shit in there. And Dusko could kill him for a round and a half, but all this guy has to do is touch him one time. Touch him one time, and this guy will crumble like anything. So he I don't I think Malik will just win it, to be honest with you. Because I, I seen the grappling. I think he has the grappling edge, even though Dusko tries to grapple and everything like that. But He's just going to get touched one time, and it's done. So, yeah, give me Malik Malik by finish. Um, it's tough to pick. I've seen him do subs and things, so maybe inside the distance, like you said. So just to get a little bit better value. I won't even go the under that one and a half. I'll just try to get the, uh, the inside the distance line. But, yeah, I think he fucking rolls him over. Oh, yeah. All right, next fight of the night, we got plus 300 Luana Panero. Very tempting. Versus minus 400 Julian Roberts. I'm not a Jillian Roberts fan. I get it. The play is probably Jillian Roberts by submission. I get it. She's a fantastic grappler. I don't find her takedowns very good. I find her striking atrocious. Uh, 
sorry. <clears throat> um, it's for me. It's it, it's dog or pass unless uh, that Jillian Roberts um, submission line is giving me something good. Uh, if if I can get like anywhere close to evens or minus, yeah, I, I don't know. It'd have to be close to evens because I just I just don't like Jillian Roberts. I I don't. I've never been impressed by her. I like I said, I don't think she's great at getting the fight to the ground. Um, I could see. I don't know. I, I might even look, when the props come out, I might look for a Luana decision line and a Jillian submission line and play them both even potentially, depending on what those props come in at. Those are probably the two ways that I would lean here. Um, what do you think? Jillian's going to win this fight. Luana's a gas. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see women gassing. It's fucking ridiculous, bud. It's so ridiculous that she's gassing in the second round. Another thing is she let Angela Hill take her two that two down twice and tap her out. Good God Almighty, that that is probably one of the worst looks you'll ever have. Let's put it this way: she was she was she was like absolutely creaming random Marcos, and then all of a sudden in that first round she like blew her load. And you could see the tide turning, and then she just fakes that whole thing when Randa kicked her in the face. Like Randa Marcos probably comes back and beats her because she was she was gassing in that fight. She gassed against Michelle Watterson Gomez in a fight that I thought she lost, lost me money. Uh, she beat Sam Hughes in a fight that surprised me because she had a lot more juice than I thought she would. But my thing is like, <clears throat> yo, dude, women at these lower weight classes can't gas, man. It's just abnormal. Uh, it, you're not a good fighter if you're gassing at this stage in your life. So fuck it. I Jillian Robertson, Jillian Robertson by sub, Jillian Robertson by sub, probably in the second round. Uh at 235. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you have it. Next fight of the night, we got plus 240, Ricky Turkios versus minus 300 Bernardo Sopage. Um I think Sopage wins this fight. I think uh even in his last loss, he looked pretty good. I think he's much stronger. If he can deal with Ricky's uh, pace, I think he's going to be fine. Um, I mean, Ricky's a tough guy. Uh, I don't think he's going to get tapped out or anything like that. So you're probably looking at a Bernardo decision, I'm thinking. I, 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 um, I, I, either way, I, I think Solpage is just the, the bigger, stronger guy. And unless he gasses and can't deal with the pace, I, I think he's fine here. Uh Again, it, it won't be a bet. I, I mean, on these fight nights, you're getting a lot of lower-level fighters, uh, a, a lot more question marks, unproven. They haven't proven themselves time and time and time again, so I don't like putting my money on them, so I won't be betting it, but the pick is going to be Bernardo for me. What do you think? I think, based on the wrestling that I saw from that last fight, but he had a harder opponent, if you ask me, that, that uh, Octavio guy, the, the Brazilian guy that kneed him in the face in the third round. Fuck, I forgot his name. But it was a good fight, though. But he had taken him down and controlled him for two rounds. He did gas. But it, did he gas because he took that fight on, like, a week's notice? Or did he gas because he's a gasser, right? So, again, you said red flags. There's a red flag. You don't know if he gassed. I'm thinking it's because he, when he took the fight on a week's notice, right? And I was on him that night. I told you. And you're like, oh, yeah, nice pick, blah, blah, blah. And then he fucking lost in the third round after win basically winning the first two, right? So, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what what is Ricky Turkios bad at getting taken down? What is Ricky Turkios good at getting up, maybe throwing volume? But, like, he gets taken down all the time. I mean, and so, Paj, I mean, I guess in the one fight that he did fight in the UFC showed that he does have some takedowns and he does have some ground game and he will take you down and he does have some fight IQ. It's too bad that he gassed. He probably wins that fight. He probably take that fight in a couple of years. And he still probably beats that Brazilian guy, even though that Brazilian guy's okay. Don't get me wrong. Pretty good fighter. Uh, I remember he fought that last time too. Uh, won a decision as an underdog. So, but anyway, this, yeah, man, but minus 300 is fuck. Maybe so probably by decision, like you said, but it's tough to go out of minus 300 with a couple unknowns there, right? Yep. Next fight of the night is the co-main. Unfortunately, Cody Garbrandt pulled out of that fight. I was on Miles Johns, so we lost that fight. The co-main is now GM3. Not much of a co-main here. We got plus 240, Gerald Mearshart taking on minus 300, Rainier de Ritter. Uh, <coughs> Gerald Mearshart is basically a magician. He pulls shit out of his ass and, and wins last second. That's his only win condition. 
he he, t- he can, if he can take a beating and hang around, sometimes he can catch a a hail mary submission if you gas out. Unfortunately, here he is fighting another guy who is a tremendous grappler, supposed to be a better grappler than GM three. So how is GM three going to pull a submission out of his ass? He's not. So unfortunately, here you got to go with the minus three hundred De Ritter. Uh, I-, I think he's fine anywhere this fight goes. I, I think even though. He's still a grappler at heart, like GM3, and he might. Some people might say he's awkward on the feet. He's not a bad striker. He might be awkward, but he's not bad. I, I think he'll be just fine. Um, uh, yeah. So give give me uh, the minus three hundred favorite here. What do you think? Same. Stay away from uh, Mercer's right hand, but nothing comes with any conviction. Um, I feel like he's the more well rounded fighter, and uh, I've seen him finish guys on the feet. Yeah, he is a grappler by heart, but I think he's a better grappler than Mearshart. Like, Mearshart, yeah, you think, so put it this way. So all these things that he grabs, all these things that he, he finishes guys with, uh, even off the bottom, off the top, whatever, a lot of gassing that's going on, one, on some of these guys, too. Like, you think he's going to pull it off against the submission grappler like the grappler that Deritter is? No. Like, maybe if Derrida was a striker with a grappling game, this is a grappler with a striking game. So, yeah, I don't feel like the submission off the back is off the table. Uh, it would have to be GM3 pushing him up against the fence and getting him down and just working this guy because this guy tires. So who did he beat the last time? Edmund Shabazian. We called that fight to a T, man. We, it's what we said. Round Edmund two. Talks about <laughs> round three. Round, or he's going to just gas out and didn't get just tapped out, right? Uh, we both said it. We both played it. I mean, it is what it is. I don't think that happens here. It's not the same situation. And honestly, DeRitter has something to prove, right? And proving it against a guy like Gerald Mearshard, who's been in the UFC a long time, is a big deal. Not a great win. It's not a huge win, but it's a good win, right? So, yeah, DeRitter. Give me DeRitter. All right, main event and what a lopsided one it is. We've got plus 550, the veteran Neil Magny, extremely boring grinder. Uh, likes to kind of lean on you, maybe take a beating, wear you out, and then snatch your neck. That's kind of his game plan. Versus minus 800, Carlos Pratas going for his 10th straight knockout, I believe. I could be wrong, but I think I heard that. Um, yeah, Carlos Pratas by knockout is definitely the pick. I, I really like Carlos Pratas. I think he's a fun fighter. I think it's rare when you see someone with that touch of death. I've bet on him every fight so far. Why would I stop here against Neil Magny? In fact, if you've watched our videos, you know that I always pick against Neil Magny. I hate Neil Magny. I find him the most boring fighter in the welterweight division. Um, so yeah, Carlos Pratas by knockout, uh, which I'll love to watch. But truth be told, I want to see him fight an, an actual wrestler. Like you could say Neil Magny's a grappler if you want, but he's not a wrestler. There's no way he's a wrestler. He, he's a grappler. Like he, he can grind on you. He can catch a submission, but he ain't taking you down. Carlos Pratness needs to fight someone who's going to shoot power takedowns on him. So we can see what he's going to be like on the bottom, because I don't think he's getting taken down here. I think he knocks out Neil Magny, uh, probably first round, first, second round, Carlos Pratness knockout. I don't see a prop yet for it. If you do, let me know, but uh, I'll be looking at that. What do you think? Yeah, Carlos Pratas by destruction. Uh, this guy is probably my new favorite fighter in the whole entire UFC. <laughs> I said after, like, when he came, the second fight ever or something, I said, until this guy loses, I'm not going to stop betting on him, right? Like, I'm just not going to. I'm just going to give him the Conor McGregor treatment, right? Until he loses, right? Those guys, my, he smokes cigarettes, just like me. Like, I love this guy. This guy's a G, man. This guy's, um, this guy's my homie. I love this guy. So, anyway... Yeah, man, I, I say he's a, obviously the technical fighter. Um, he may not be the volume monkey in this fight because Neil Magny likes to throw these pitter-patter, like, glass punches. So, yeah, he might not be the volume monkey because Kylo Pratis, you know, in a couple fights, he's not throwing the volume. But, you know, the touch makes up for it. So, yeah, I don't think the grindy bullshit's going to happen. Once he gets out in space and gets touched a couple times, I think. The striking's too technical. The striking's too straight. The striking's too powerful. Yeah, this is probably Neil Magny versus Shavkat all over again, just without the less of a ground game. Just finish time-wise, anyway. But, yeah, I don't have much to say here. I think practice by destruction. I think under two and a half. Oh, yeah. Yes. Fuck this five-round shit. Not I'll be, I'll be looking I'm looking under a decision half. guy, and you know me, but no. Nah. <laughs> Not here, buddy. Nope. 
<laughs> Sorry, guys, a little bit sick here. There you have it. There's our uh, predictions for the card. It's already Wednesday. I'm not going to lie. I don't think we're going to get a prop video up here. But we'll uh, we'll drop in the comments when we see the props come out, what we're playing, what we like. Um, as always, please like, please subscribe, drop us a comment, drop us your favorite pick. Have a good one, guys.